In this session, we shall examine the definition of accounting and also explore the various types of accounting. By the end of this session, you should be able to answer the following questions written on your screen. Study them before you proceed. Now, what is accounting? Accounting is the language businesses use to communicate. This is the most basic definition of accounting. However, there are other definitions and I will be discussing them later on. So before we get to the nitty gritties, let's ask ourselves, what exactly are businesses communicating? To better understand what businesses are communicating, we need to remind ourselves why businesses are set up in the first place. Of course, there are many reasons why entrepreneurs take the risk of starting a business, but you'll agree with me that the main reason is to make profit. Making profit is only possible when a business sells an item at a price that more than covers the cost of production, and as such, the profit is a reward for taking the risk. When a business is small, for example, if one is running a small grocery store, it's almost easy for that person to easily determine whether he is making a profit or a loss, since the number of transactions is small. However, as this small business starts growing, it attracts more customers and that means more transactions. In some instances, the grocery may open up many other branches which increase the bulk of transactions even more. This increased chaos of business activity makes it hard for the business owner to be able to tell whether the business is making a profit or a loss. Because there is now a problem of not being able to know whether a business is making a profit or a loss, this is the part where accounting comes in to solve the problem. The problem is there is no means to know whether the business is making a profit or a loss. The solution to this problem is accounting. Accounting comes in to help communicate the performance of the business. So going back to our question, what exactly is the business communicating? Well, the answer is that the business is communicating to stakeholders about how it is doing. And accounting so happens to be the means by which that communication is made. But hey, does accounting only communicate whether the business has made profit or loss? Of course not. Accounting also helps in communicating other vital information. For instance, if a business needs to get a loan from the bank, the bank can only determine if the business is able to pay back by looking at its financial statements. The financial statements tell a story that will help the bank to make a decision. If a business needs help to keep track of its data, it will rely on accounting information. The same applies to government taxes. The tax collecting body will depend on accounting information to determine how much tax to collect from a business. So, these are just illustrations meant to support the notion that accounting is the language of business. It is a language of business that helps facilitate decision making. So, in other words, by definition, accounting is the language of business and its primary role is to communicate data to help users of the information to make sound decisions. However, there is a process involved when accounting language is being used to generate this information. Let's say you are running a grocery store. You'll be making sales on a daily. So in your books, you'll record sales. There will also be expenses you incur. So in your books, you'll record expenses like electricity, rent, and so on. You'll also have people to buy stuff from you on credit. So you're supposed to record these in your books as data. Now, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that accounting, first of all, starts with you recording and classifying the transactions in the books. After all the information has been classified in the books, this information is processed by applying various rules and conventions to produce what we call financial statements. These financial statements serve to communicate the status of the business, whether the business is making a profit or a loss and so on. So upon preparation of financial statements, these statements are scrutinized and so they create a basis for decision making. This process, as described now, brings us to yet another definition of accounting, and that is that accounting is the process of recording and classifying financial transactions in the books, summarizing and communicating of financial information through production of financial statements or reports, and the interpretation of financial statements to facilitate decision making. Now let's get to the types of accounting. Accounting has evolved over time. Different branches of accounting have, have come up 
as a result of economic, industrial, and technological developments. These developments created the demand for information needed by various stakeholders. So before we get to the branches of accounting, we need to understand who these stakeholders are, since it is the stakeholders that demand the accounting information. For starters, a stakeholder is simply a party which has an interest in a company and can either affect or be affected by the company's operations. So we have two types of stakeholders. We have internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. Internal stakeholders are the people running the day-to-day -day activities of the business. And these include employees, managers, boards of directors. As you can see, these are entities that are within the business. Then we have what we call the external stakeholders. The external stakeholders are simply the people who are not within the business, but they either care about or are affected by the business performance. They include people like consumers, suppliers, government regulators, and so on. So it is these stakeholders that demand for accounting information. The categories that are embedded within these stakeholders dictate the fields of accounting that are in existence today. So I will classify accounting into three major branches or call them disciplines. And these are public accounting, private accounting, and government accounting. I'll briefly describe each of them. We'll start with private accounting. Private accounting is where qualified accountants are engaged in accounting work of individuals, corporations, and non-profit making organizations. Persons employed in private accounting normally work only for one business. Accountants here may specialize in fields like financial accounting, cost accounting, among other fields. I'll be discussing the various fields of accounting later on. Then we have public accounting. Now this is the provision of accounting services by highly qualified certified public accountants to various clients. These clients may include individuals, corporations, and the government. Public accountants offer services in fields such as auditing of financial statements, provision of management and advisory services, which is management accounting, and also provision of tax consultancy services, which involves the preparation of tax returns. And again, we'll be discussing these accounting fields a bit later on. And lastly, we have what we call government accounting. Like the word states, it is accounting for government institutions, like the local government, and other government parastatos. Government accounts are unique from private companies and other organizations. Now moving on to the fields of accounts, there are several fields of accounting as a result of the varied uses of accounting. I'll be discussing a few of them. We'll get started with financial accounting. Now you'll agree with me that in the day-to-day -day operations of any business, transactions are recorded in the books and then these financial records become the basis for preparing financial statements. This is the process of financial accounting. In other words, financial accounting is based on a systematic method of recording transactions of any business using accounting principles. It entails preparing financial statements, which then become a source of information for external users, or call them external stakeholders. Now let's go on to cost accounting. Now, this deals with evaluating the cost of a product or service offered. It calculates the cost by calculating all factors that contribute to the product of the output, both manufacturing and administrative factors. Determining product costs and assigning costs to a product is called costing, and the main objective of cost accounting is to help management in fixing the prices and controlling the cost of production. It also pinpoints many wastages, leakages, and, def and defects during the manufacturing and marketing process. Then we have what we call management accounting. This field of accounting provides information to management for better administration of the business. By providing information, I mean the process of analysis and interpretation of accounting data. Management is always able to make effective decisions with the help of various management information systems like budgets, projected cash flow, and fund flow statements, and other tools. Then we have what we call tax accounting. Tax accounting simply involves the preparation and filing of tax returns, and also the preparation of tax reports, compliance of laws, and also reduction of taxes legally.
Then you also have auditing. Auditing is simply the process of independently reviewing and offering of an opinion on the authenticity of accounting records. And definitely the person that carries out this exercise is called an auditor. Then there is what we call fund accounting. Fund accounting simply involves keeping a record of funds of a non-profit organization. In other words, fund accounting is an accounting system for recording resources whose use has been limited by the donor or the grant authority or governing agency or other individuals or organizations by the law. This kind of accounting emphasizes accountability rather than profitability. That is why it's mostly used by non-profit organizations. Then we have what we call forensic accounting. Now, sometimes people in an organization can connive to embezzle funds or call it misappropriation of funds. When this happens, investigations are initiated to try and establish how these funds are misappropriated. Now, since we are talking about misappropriation of funds, it means in order to verify this allegation, accounting skills have to be used to re-examine the accounting records in order to investigate the fraud. The process of using accounting skills to investigate fraud, embezzlement, and any other irregularities hidden as financial transactions is what we call forensic accounting. In many cases, forensic accounting is used in legal proceedings but also in compliance efforts to prevent crime. Then there is what we call fiduciary accounting. Now what is a fiduciary? Well, let's assume you need to invest money in a country far away. You will need a, a contact person in, in that country that is far away. Now you may not know this person so much, but the mere fact that you need to invest money in their country means that you have to trust them with your money and believe that they'll go ahead and invest this money with your best interests at heart. So when this person acts in good faith and invests the money according to the interests, according to your interests, then this person is called a fiduciary. In other words, a fiduciary is a person or a legal entity like a bank or a brokerage firm that is legally required to act in the best interest of a client in situations where total trust, honesty, and good faith is required. So we'll, with this, you'll find that people like attorneys are fiduciaries to their clients. Some financial advisors are fiduciaries to their clients. Now take note, I said some financial advisors. Not all financial advisors are fiduciaries to their client. Now, why some? This is because of what is expected of a, of a fiduciary. A fiduciary is expected to always put the interests of their clients above their own. It's like when you're you hire a taxi. The taxi driver drives you, but he won't play loud music or just speak anyhow, just to please himself. The thing is, while he is driving, much as you'll be paying him, he drives with your interests at heart. He drives with your interests above his. So that's how a fiduciary is supposed to work. They act on behalf of the client and so will have to act in the interest of their client, even when they don't agree with what the client wants. In other words, a fiduciary is expected to act in the best interest of the client or beneficiary in all situations, even if those decisions are contrary to the fiduciary's own interests. For financial advisors, this may mean giving financial advice that may yield no compensation. But hey, not all financial advisors are fiduciaries. So when a person or an entity has been entrusted with managing or has been put in custody of some property and this person or entity is managing this property for the benefit of another person, that management of financial records associated with this kind of arrangement is what we call fiduciary accounting. In other words, fiduciary accounting centers around the management of property for another person or business. The fiduciary accountant manages any account and activities related to the administration and ownership of property. Fiduciary accounting covers estate accounting, trust accounting, and receivership. And by receivership, I mean appointing of a custodian of a business assets during events such as bankruptcy. So to come to the close of this session, to give a recap of what we've covered, we defined accounting as the language of business, which involves the process of recording and classifying financial transactions in the books, summarizing and communicating of financial transactions through production of financial statements or reports, and the interpretation of the financial statements to facilitate decision-making. 
we also talked about the branches of accounting. Here we talked of public accounting, private accounting, and government accounting. Then from there we went into the different fields of accounting. These included financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting, tax accounting, auditing, fund accounting, forensic accounting, and fiduciary accounting. 